Hey guys, how's it going today? Um, I was outside working all day with the guys that were doing the forms for our concrete, uh, driving the tractor back and forth and bringing dirt back and forth, so I got a little bit of a sunburn, so I'm a little bit faded. Uh, but I ran across a study that I wanted to share with you uh, from the Academic Department of Surgery at Kuwait University. So I'll put the link in the uh, area below, and I want to go over some of the findings, results, and statements that the study had made for you. There we go. This is the area where we're getting concrete in our backyard so that we can put a swim spa over here. I was telling you I was getting electrical in. I put the electrical in uh, so that I can run it to the spa from my box. And today people came and put the forms in so we can get the concrete poured in a couple days so we can start outfitting our backyard because we've lived here over a year and all it's been is dirt out here so it's not fun for the wife and kid to uh, sit out here or play out here because it gets dusty and there's nothing to do so hopefully with the swim spa we'll be able to get some exercise in there when we want to swim because it's got the uh, jets that uh, make it so that you can swim in place and then it's also an area for the kid to play in the water because we wanted to get a pool but it's just too cold up here. I mean, it's June right now and it's still cold in the mornings and the evenings. So I, th I don't think the pool would ever really warm up enough to use uh, until July or August. And then uh, after that, it would start getting too cold as early as September, October time. So the swim spa is gonna be nice because we can keep the water temperature up a little bit and we can hopefully use it year round. So I think even though it's pretty expensive for what it is, um, being an above ground spa even though it's pretty expensive it is 16 foot by 8 foot so it's big enough that the kid can play in it and we can swim in it and hopefully get more use out of it than we would an in-ground pool so that's what we're doing right now All right, people are always wanting to know what I'm eating. So this is not very pretty, but it's what I'm eating today. This is my second meal. Earlier I had some ham. Now I'm gonna have a ham omelet with onions, ham, mozzarella cheese, habanero hot sauce, and then a couple slices of low carb bread with cream cheese on it, and a Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm sure it'll taste good, even though it doesn't look all that good. Okay, so this study was a supposedly long-term study on the effects of a ketogenic diet on obese patients. Uh, and the average BMI for the patients in women was 39.4 and men was 35.9. This was a 24-week study, uh, so I wouldn't necessarily call that really long-term. Um, people keep asking me, is it safe to be permanently on a ketogenic diet? Is a long-term ketogenic diet safe and advantageous? And I would absolutely say yes. And I'll be coming out with more information about that in future videos. Uh, but 24 weeks, close to six months. Um, and this study absolutely found that it was safe and advantageous. Uh, on average, the patients or the people in the study lost over 30 pounds in that 24 weeks. Now they started them out on, I believe it was um, 20 grams of carbohydrates per day and one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight, which is about, I think that's 2.2 pounds. So about half a gram of, uh, of protein per pound of body weight. And then after a few weeks, after they were already fat adapted, they upped it by another 20 grams of carbohydrates a day for a total of 40 to 50 grams of carbohydrates each day. Uh, they had them on a supplement too with some vitamins and minerals. There's a whole list of them in the study that you can check out at the link that's in the description. Uh, but there's been a lot of talk lately about whether or not um, a ketogenic diet is good for your cholesterol. A lot of people say your cholesterol will go up. Now it seems to me that the people that have been having tests done while they're in the ketogenic diet 
uh, that have had an increase in their cholesterol. It's in their total cholesterol, not in the bad cholesterol, uh, which is the LDL, um, or at least parts of the LDL are bad, not all of it. Uh, but the LDL number uh, seems to be decreasing. The HDL number seems to be increasing. Overall, while they're mobilizing their fat stores, it seems like the um, cholesterol is going up. But long term, it seems to go down. This study found the same thing. Long term, their overall cholesterol went down. After, at the end of the 24 weeks, their overall cholesterol was down. Their HDL had increased, which is good. Their LDL had decreased, which is also good. Uh, but what the most important thing about it, I think, is that the triglycerides decreased significantly. Uh, they went from an average of 2.75 millimolar to 1.09 millimolar. So they went down by over 50% in 24 weeks. And that's the triglycerides, which we all know uh, is a very good indicator when it goes down. Uh, another thing that happened, which we all know and expect, is that their blood glucose went down over the course of the 24 weeks from an average of 7.26 to what would be considered um, a non-pre-diabetic range of 5.62. So that's a very good sign and uh, something that if you're pre-diabetic or if you have a family history of diabetes, you'd be particularly interested in. Um, 7.26 to 5.62 is a significant drop in a very short period of time. Um, that study goes on to say that a ketogenic diet is far better than modern anticonvulsants and it's a safe alternative to therapies for infantile spasms and can act as a mood stabilizer in bipolar illness. Uh, in addition to that, beneficial changes in the brain energy profile have been seen. So not only is this diet good for obese patients, but long term it's good for people with mental illness uh, it's good for people with spasms, so that would be um, people that are having seizures. It reduces the amount of seizures that people are having, infantile spasms, so it's even good for babies. Um, so there's, it's, this study is telling us that uh, not only is the diet good for our bodies, it's good for our hormone levels, it's good for our cholesterol levels, and it's good for our brain activity, uh, which we keep talking about, but it sure is nice to actually have the science to prove it. Uh, so this, this study is called the long-term effects of a ketogenic diet in obese patients. I would like to see even longer studies and I'm sure I'll be able to find some, but I did run across this one and wanted to share it with you uh, because it's a pretty significant findings, I think, and it might help people rest assured that uh, they don't have to worry about their long-term health if they wanna be on a ketogenic diet. And all these people that are telling you that it's not safe, that it's going to cause your cholesterol to go up, that it's going to give you a heart attack from all the fat, that it's going to cause you to gain weight. I mean, I don't know if they're being disingenuous or not. Maybe they actually believe the things they're saying, but they're absolutely wrong. Uh, I've proven that this diet can be uh, managed long term. I've, uh, I've seen other people and talked to several other people who have been using it long term with great results. Uh, their energy goes up. They become more alert. They learn quicker, they react faster, they get rid of inflammation, they lose weight. I mean, life is really just better when you're in ketosis. So hit the like button down below if you're in ketosis or want to be in ketosis. Subscribe so you can continue to hear the uh, findings that I have. I like to study this stuff and share it with you. I want to get as many people on the ketogenic bandwagon as possible. I do intermittent fasting, extended fasting, and share these videos if you think that they can help somebody that you care about as well. Thanks a lot, and I'll talk to you later.